Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers. Uh, I am the Carb Addiction Doc and this video is kind of an independent video, but it's also a follow-up to the CAC score video and the coronary artery calcium score video. Um, because I think this is something that most of the people, even the practitioners in our space, don't quite understand. And I didn't understand for a long time until I started to look at our data and, and there was a clarity for me about two separate pathways of human genetics. Folks, you know, I've done a recent little experiment. As you can see, I'm wearing a G7, a Dexcom G7 CGM, so I know what my blood sugars are every five minutes. I typically run fairly low. And you know that I drink heavy cream in my coffee every morning. And the purpose of the heavy cream is to get me into ketosis. Some people put butter in their coffee. Some people put MCT oil in it. Some people put heavy cream in. And this morning, I happened to put whole milk, not heavy cream, in my coffee because I didn't have any heavy cream. And my blood sugar went up by 38 points. By 38 points in the course of 15 minutes and took about an hour and a half to come back down below 100. That's scary. That's scary. So I did an experiment. Instead of putting cream in my coffee, I used Ketone IQ. And Ketone IQ is a ketogenic product that also does what the milk in my coffee does. It puts me into ketosis and prevents me from eating. And the paradox is that when I had my morning coffee with ketones instead of cream or milk, my blood sugar went down by six points. It went down by six points and I don't know how long it stayed there because it, I fluctuated a little bit, but it stayed level. There was no bump, it stayed flat. So this stuff in the morning, uh, it also gives you a bit of a boost, but in the morning, instead of my um, cream, instead of my whole milk, um, and certainly I'm not a fan of putting MCT oil and butter in my coffee. I just don't like the taste or coconut. I just don't like the taste. It, it, it's fine to get you in ketosis. This is an alternative. If you're interested in trying, the promo code is down below in the show notes. So if you look at the graphic that's appearing on the screen right now, you'll see it's just a standard bell curve, okay? And on one side of the bell curve, we've got a group of people who are predominantly diabetic, have type 2 diabetes. These are the type 2 diabetics. And these people, when they're over on this side of the, of the graph, they are what we call tofi, thin on the outside, fat on the inside, but they really are lean. They might be slightly overweight or normal weight, but they have type 2 diabetes. They have insulin resistance type 2 diabetes. Then on the other side, we've got a group of people who are enormous. They're massively, enormously obese, four or 500 pounders, huge. The kind of people you look at and say, oh my God, they're going to have a heart attack in about two seconds. And, but they're enormous, and yet their blood sugars are normal. And then obviously we've got the rest of the bell curve where people shift across. So how does this happen and, and what is the basis for this and why is it important to understand where on this bell curve you personally fit? Because this is a genetic bell curve. So the starting point is this bell curve is irrelevant. Obesity and diabetes are irrelevant unless this thing you see in the middle here is part of your, not is part of, is your life. And that is chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption. Chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption. And when you're eating a lot of sugar and starch, the way the body responds to that, stores a little bit in the liver, distributes through the tissues. Over time, over, over a long period of time, um, your cells start pushing back and start down-regulating and changing the insulin, uh, insulin receptor so that you need more and more insulin to be able to get sugar into your cells. But what happens at first, when you eat a lot of sugar and starch, under the influence of insulin, that sugar by the liver and by the fat cells gets turned into fat. We call that de novo lipogenesis, new formation of fat. Liver does it, fat cells do it, fat cells store it, liver cells package it in VLDL as triglycerides and ship it out to the fat cells where it gets stored. So that's what's happening. And that is controlled and regulated by insulin. So at first, everybody who eats excessive carbohydrates starts to gain weight. Now, the cells push back and you start to develop resistance to insulin. And now genetically, we've got two types of people, two groups of people. Some people can produce massive amounts of insulin 
And we measure that in the bloodstream. When you do measure, when you measure C-peptide and insulin, you can measure their fasting C-peptide and insulin through the roof. Those people, no matter how resistant the cells are, they can continue to push sugar into the liver, into the uh, uh, fat cells, fat cells under the influence of insulin, liver not so much, but continue to convert that sugar to fat. Those people become enormous. They're on this side of the bell curve, but they don't develop diabetes. Their blood sugars stay relatively normal because they're so efficient at turning sugar to fat. Okay? The we'll come back to their disease spectrum in a second. The second group of people, and everywhere from this part of the bell curve all the way across here, at some point, you're becoming fatter, fatter, fatter. At some point, you stop being able to convert extra sugar to fat because you don't produce enough insulin to overcome the resistance. And then the blood sugar starts to build up. And as that blood sugar builds up, it, 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 it um, attaches permanently to the hemoglobin. We call that hemoglobin A1C or A1C starts to rise up, but that causes an inflammatory condition in the blood vessels. That's where your plaque comes from, from the inflammation of that chronically elevated blood sugar. So these enormous people with normal sugar, they don't have that inflammation because the liver and the fat cells are doing all the work. The people that are not able to do that, the blood sugar builds up, they have the stroke and the cardiovascular risk, and that risk increases as you move on this bell curve toward the diabetic side. But at some point, you stop being able to gain weight, and then you circle around, and you become increasingly diabetic as long as you eat chronic excessive carbohydrates. Where you are in that bell curve determines your disease profile. And this is important. Because as a physician, I need to know where you are in that bell curve to be able to see what disease I expect, what to look for. The morbidly obese, severely obese people with normal blood sugars and a normal A1C, they're going to have a much higher cancer risk. They're going to have a higher Alzheimer's uh, um, cognitive function failure uh, risk. They're going to have a high autoimmune disease risk, thyroid disease, Hashimoto's disease, autoimmune risk. And they are going to have as females polycystic ovarian syndrome and as males low testosterone, high estrogen, high estrogen. Okay, those are the diseases they get. So infertility will be a part of that. As you move across to this spectrum, those diseases go, they decrease. And what increases is your cardiovascular and your neuropathy, neuropathy, the nerves to your body, all over your body. So those people get cardiovascular risk. Their heart attack stroke risk is through the roof, okay, um, from the plaque. And that correlates with a CAC score video. They need to pay attention to that. Cardiovascular risk. The other risk they get is neuropathy. So any nerve can be damaged. Nerves to the brain, autism spectrum disorder, starting point, okay. Um, tinnitus, migraines, seizure disorders. Are, they're at higher risk for those. Then you get the eye disorders, the retinopathies. You get the facial stuff. Uh, you can then get cardiovascular, uh, sorry, cardiac arrhythmias. The electrical system of the heart becomes abnormal. So the electrical system becomes a problem. And a lot of people die because of electrical failure of the heart, arrhythmias and atrial fibrillation, that kind of thing, which can cause secondary blood clots, not related to the cardiovascular disease. So there's a different form of clotting that is separate and apart from the cardiovascular score. So that's why the CAC score is not the only thing. You've got to look at the arrhythmias. We haven't even talked about that. We're going to talk about that in another video. Then you've got the GI disturbance. You've got acid reflux. You've got the neuropathy of the gut. You've got irritable bowel syndrome. You've got constipation. You've got diarrhea. You've got GI upset. Then you've got the erectile dysfunction. <laughs> you've got kidney damage. You've got uh, from the hyperglycemia. You've got hypertension because the blood vessels get affected, and then you've got peripheral neuropathy in your legs. So that is the diabetic side, and where you are on the spectrum, a small percent, about 3% of people are pure TOFI diabetics, and about 3% are massively morbidly obese without having any diabetes. And then anywhere on that spectrum, you've got the crossover, but the crossover is always from obesogenic back to diabetogenic. And it depends on your insulin production capacity, what that loop looks like. So that's the issue. And once you understand that as a physician, as a patient, you can do your blood work, you can evaluate yourself to see where you are genetically, not by testing your genes, but by looking at your blood work. And you can then manipulate your diet and medications and lifestyle to get yourself into the optimal shape. Well, if you look at this graph the way it is, 
The obvious thing is get rid of the circle over here. Get rid of chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption and all of that goes away. There's the call to action. This is not difficult to understand. And yet it is the commonest set of diseases, insulin resistance, excessive carbohydrate consumption, are the commonest set of diseases that occur in America and in fact in most parts of the world right now. And this is a simple problem to solve if it's not going to be solved in my lifetime. Understand that you can understand what your risk is and you can understand where to put the emphasis. Do I go and see the cardiologist? Do I see the surgeon? What do I do to mitigate my disease? I am the carb addiction doc. If you understand that, you understand where we're going. And the next video will be on arrhythmias. And I'm trying to get a friend of mine who's a cardiologist to talk to me about this from an expert perspective. Because the two things we still need to talk about, hypertension and arrhythmias. And we'll do that. If you want a consult, if you want me to do your blood work, if you want you, me to tell you that story and give you the algorithm of care based upon your personal needs, not some, not some cutout of where I think you should be, give us a shout. 561-517-0642. Text us, call us, WhatsApp us. Connect with us, get an appointment, we can get the blood work done, we can analyze it for you, and we can help you with your call to action. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. Till next time.